Bruce and Rich are in the house. Yeah, we're going to get you real quick. And then we just saw an accident and traffic jam. Got caught in the traffic. Only when you got an interview, you're waiting for you. Like, oh, I can't (laughs) believe that Puerto Rico's got traffic that bad. (laughs) Oh, you should see the traffic lights. They're slow. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, think it, I, I think it's an island thing now. Uh, is, it, is it is it a San Juan thing? We're not in San Juan. No, we're we're no? On, the west, on the west coast, uh, at the bottom. Yeah, the southwest oh, side. Okay. Yeah. And only one main road, and that's one hundred. <laughs> yeah. One hundred. Yeah. There you go. Camino Cien. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, everybody. So I'd like you to introduce. I'd like to introduce Ace and Rich, and you know we're going to be talking to them and asking the real hard questions. We've oh. been inter- entertained with uh, you know Ernest just for the last little bit, but now we're going to be entertained with Ace and Rich. So the first question, I think Ooh, I'm going to bring this boy, one out first. No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> no rest for the wicked. I want to just get right at it and get right. some real good content going here i'm going to mute myself because i want to listen to this yeah so if everybody wants to mute uh, that'd be great if not i can mute you (laughs) anyways so the first question is this how do you both get along when you disagree on business decisions (laughs) who wins Ah, he wants to know power couple style. What happens to us? Well, you know, we both are Leos. (laughs) We're both Leos. We're both lions. And we're both bossy. And we're always uh, (laughs) and stubborn. I hear. Yeah, Yeah. we're stubborn. Uh, Yeah, we're always. Can I can I flip a coin and say Mama wins? (laughs) Nine times out of ten, yes. There you go. I won the bet. I told you, Brian. (laughs) But I told everybody fifteen minutes ago. Hold on. There's just uh, on the other side of the coin there. It, what happens is I always tell her like, look, you started with network marketing. I started with affiliate marketing. Yep. I have more experience than you do. Trust me when I tell you this, please listen. And no matter what I say, <laughs> she does not listen. <laughs> However, she'll it's hear the it. New Jersey girl you in know, me, no, man, I'm from Jersey. But she'll hear it from some other marketer, or some <laughs> other coach. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, that makes sense. I'm like, I told you that like two years ago. You know, <laughs> it's like kids, man. You know, they don't listen to their parents, but they'll listen to a total oh stranger. <laughs> they will. Yep, that's uh, for sure. But, but really, the um, you know, to answer that question, yeah. Um, you know, we we do argue sometimes. It, it's just the reality of it. And um, and then what happens is, if one feels that they, you know they were too hard or yeah you know we always come back to each other and we always apologize yeah because like we're in a relationship a mistake, you know i'll apologize to her and then she'll be like we'll yeah, admit you know when what? we're wrong i'm sorry too mm-hmm. you know we'll what apologize mean? And vice versa but we so, try to keep business and personal relationships separate yeah. like when we get into a discussion i'll be you know rich always comes to me and he'll say hun this is totally non-business related this is between me and you so don't take nothing emotionally you know that's true you did struggle with that in the very beginning i struggled beginning. with that in the very beginning yeah everything that i said business professionally so I took everything personal. She was just like, ah, oh, <laughs> ah, and I'm like, look, keep your emotions at the door. Do not bring it in the house. This True. is a business conversation. Yeah, has yeah. nothing to do with you personally. Yes, yes. And when she learned that, I, I think that's when things started really moving forward. Yeah, and we've been together since way. 2010. So, and, and and the thing is, being together that long, you learn a lot about a person. You know, yeah. and we haven't had our wedding yet. We, we're still engaged. Well, she didn't, you know, you know when it comes to uh, affiliate marketing, she didn't really get seriously into affiliate marketing probably to like 2011. Yeah. Right. Close to 2012. Yes. Um, so that was the affiliate marketer. She was the network marketer. Yes. So we yes. had that one year of her kind of putting her feet on the desk and, you know, I was totally and, brainwashed by MLM. So yeah. it was just uh. like the only thing I knew, but there was like nothing else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when I found out one day, you know, when we got together, he, he came to my house and. He was like, I just got paid. I said, me too. And he looks at his commissions in his back office and it's like 10 grand. And I look at mine as a damn check for like $3 and 33 cents. I said, what the, what the heck is this? I said, no, 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 no. What are you playing you at? Teaching, dude, what you know? <laughs> dude, you got to show me what you're doing. Cause the $3 and 33 check ain't enough to buy uh, milk. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but here's the thing though. Even, even that's the case. Yeah. Um, the mindset wasn't there yet because oh. I, I, I told us, I said, look, I'm going to go back to work because, you know, of my, you know, my first business yes. went down. Uh, I said, I'm going to go back to work, same building that I left in the first place. I've been working there the first four years. 
And I told her, I said, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it, but you're going to do this while I'm at work. I don't, you don't need to work. I'm going to show you how to work from home. Let me do the job and pay the bills while we're building the business again from scratch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So from there, I found that she was not doing any work. She was, you know, messing around on Facebook, Peggy Bundy, scrolling, <laughs> like eating Mary chocolate, with and putting her feet up, watching, uh, you know, um, uh, was it Martin? Um, I love my show, Martin. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but she wasn't working. So, and and me, you know, I I have the mindset of an entrepreneur, um, and I want to make sure that things were getting done. So I said, I'm sorry, but you know, it's been a while now, and you have to go back to work. Yep, <laughs> reality check. <laughs> But we, we always we always meet up in the middle when it comes to understanding stuff. And yes. if we butt heads, we always realize who was wrong and stuff like that. So that, we always, that's we always went you mean on Rich. Off. You realize it was Rich that's wrong, right? Ace? <laughs> <laughs> Nine times out of ten. You know, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we learn a lot from that, though. Once we apologize, we, we realize that, you know, let's not get emotional about it. Let's yes. be more logical about it. Yeah. And leave the emotions at the front door. And that's the thing that makes yeah. us makes us unique as a couple. And, and a lot of people in the industry call us a power couple. But it's not easy working together with your spouse. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's keep that real. Hey, yeah. hey I you worked with really that. Like... <laughs> my my yeah. dad had a family business. I know what it's like. You're working with yeah. your siblings and you're working with yes. your mom and dad and everything else. Yeah, there can be some stresses there once in a while. It can yeah. be. Yeah. It can be. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so the next question. Okay. Rich, in Ace's story, it was mentioned that you were successful in one of your early businesses before it went under. Yeah. What was the secret of your success in that business? Um. Well, I'll take a step back um, because I started in 2008 and it was Carbon Copy Pro when that first business, when that, you know, that was my first venture. A guy came up to me and he kept, you know, um, following up with me, a young kid. He just kept following up, following up, following up. And I was like, nope, I'm focused. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing this and this is all I want to do. I'm just learning marketing. I'm starting to understand what this is all about with affiliate marketing. And, um, but it just kept bugging me. And I said, all right, fine. I'm, you know, I'll take a look. What I realized was it, it was like a matrix system. And every time somebody cycles, you know, you made $10,000. So I had to, of course, you know, go out there and, and find people. I had a good mentor and the mentor, um, he showed me, you know, what to do. He said, I want you to do this and do that. And uh, if you get a response, I'll tell you what to do next. So, and of course, social media back then was a little baby. You know what I mean? It was more oh, wide yeah. open, wild, wild west, you know, no throttle or no shadow banning, not like that. Um, then, um, you know, I, I started attracting people to me from what he told me to put on my wall on Facebook. And when I did this, he says, um, your last post you put up there that I told you to do, you know, you have someone uh, that wants to talk to you now, right? Um, and his name, you know, is Scott. And he wants you to have a meeting with him and his partner. And, and I just got started with this whole new deal when I signed up with this matrix thing. Um, and what happened was the next thing that happened was I realized that I had to conversate with more people, but when I was in carbon copy pro, when I first got started, it's telling me, you don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to talk to no one. Oh, and yeah. you know, this is the marketing world and people were doing it like that. Yes. Cause it was a wild, wild west. But the reality is when to make that kind of money and be successful, I had to talk to people and I had to get uncomfortable. And luckily for me, I was in a band. I was always talking to people. I was on stage touring, you know, conversating with fans. So it didn't really bother me to talk to anybody, but I was in a situation where believe it or not, at that time I got, I was homeless. And I was there with my friend Scott in a one room efficiency and uh, he was a drug addict. Mm. And I was listening to uh, Jose Silva, the ES uh, ESP uh, mind ultra system is called. And it was learning to program my mind and prepare me, you know, for the successful me. Right. And you guys should check that out. Um, ultra um, a mind ESP system, but do the original Jose Silva. And what happened was, I got my friend rocking back and forth like this. And I got my mentor saying, look, man, you got this meeting tomorrow. I need you to be on this phone call. 
and you, you're going to have these guys are, are great uh, networkers and uh, they want to talk to you. And I'm like, OK, all right, fine. And so I was a little nervous, but being prepared, you know, going through the Ultramind ESP, ESP system, it really prepared me. But at the same time, I'm rocking back, you know, my, my friend's rocking back and forth. He's on drugs. He's a drug addict. Right. And all of a sudden I put my headphones on and I'm going to bed and I'm just getting prepared for the following day. And I got really tunnel focus. And this is what really catapulted that success because the guy that was coming in, um, you know, he was already a six figure earner. I was a no figure earner. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really make any money yet or anything else like that. And the other person was also a six figure earner. So in this field, in this marketplace, I was wet behind the ears. So I, I just I had to make sure I had my confidence and I was ready, ready to go in this conversation. And I want you guys to know this because when you get to this point, you, you got to really show up a hundred percent when you have these conversations and, mm -hmm. and, you know, coming from a band and then having this type of conversation, it's like night and day. So it's two different things. So the morning came and luckily I'm an IT guy. So what I did was I, I hooked up a router to my friend's modem and I had my laptop and I couldn't do it in that one room efficiency because this guy's a drug addict and things were going nuts. And I had to go out to the parking lot. And so I had the laptop right outside the little patio there. And I had a wireless headphone, Panatronics, I still remember it. And I walked out to the parking lot and I started having the conversation. And one the, the lady that was there, she tried to, she wasn't very nice. She was hard on me. And she says stuff like this, she goes, oh, well, what do you know about networking? And what do you know about, you know, uh, you know, trying to make money online? And, you know, and, and I'm like, well, you know, you're you're probably just here for dating and uh, you don't really know what you're doing. And she was really <laughs> hard. on me. And keep in mind, I'm I'm new at this. You know what I mean? So something came over me and this was a make or break time. So what I said was, I'm like, well, first of all, I don't even know who you think you are, but I'm not really into dating. I'm more into long term relationship. Are you ready to get married? Cause I'm doing this for the long term. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, that just came out of me out of nowhere. I mean, I just, my mindset was, I guess, was prepared from, you know, from the ultra mind ESP system. I would never talk like that, but that's what came out at that moment. Well, the conversation went great after that. And, and then, you know, the conversation was over, no decisions yet, you know? And then all of a sudden uh, I got a call from my mentor. He told me, I don't know what you did in that conversation, but Scott is signing up right now. Wow. <laughs> so when Scott signed up, Scott brought in like 20 leaders right behind him. Talk about leverage. Yep. From there, again, it was a matrix, right? So it just kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. So I, that gave me a lot of confidence to say, hey, you know, I could do this. So I started going out there and started conversating with more people. I started opening up a Skype account. You know, this is all new back then, right? So I opened up a Skype account. I started adding all these people on Skype, started conversating. Um, these people started coming in from Scott Arvin's team and I started meeting a whole bunch of new people and I was on the phone every single hour on the hour and bringing people in. And I'm like, wow, the momentum is just kicking in. And then from there, I started cycling and I made 10, my first $10,000. Wow. And I got excited, but I wasn't excited as, as the way that you think you would be excited. I felt like the weight lifted off my shoulders. So I was really quite calm. Then a week later, I cycled again and made another 10,000. That's 20,000 in five weeks. Wow. I never made that kind of money before. So for me, it was brand new, right? So it just kept happening over and over and over. And then I started getting up on the ranks and I became international diamond. I started getting bonus checks. In six months, it came to six figures. You know what I mean? I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. You know, and I, I just had this confidence over me i started traveling i started you know um you know joining new systems that were kind of similar as far as matrixes and all of a sudden i started making money with that i went to my first uh my second live event uh which was lgm prosperity at the time when they were available you know when they were a thing and all of a sudden like i got asked to talk on stage because somebody recognized me for doing video marketing because i was already doing video marketing at the time and say hey rich would you like to talk on stage and give me your tip on video marketing and I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, when, you know, success shows up, you, you got to show up. You know what I mean? That's the way it works. 
if you know even if you're you know nervous i was just used to the stage anyways but when i went up there it was just me nobody was backing me up like in a band so i had a, a, like over a crowd of 500 people it was a good size and um I, I i gave some tips and people loved it i got a standing ovation and uh and that weekend it led up to me to meeting my coach so to answer your question that success came when I got uncomfortable and I started conversating with people and, um, and closing some deals. So that was the first time, but even though that happened, I knew I needed a coach. So to continue that, I had to get mentored by a guy named Jeffrey Combs. And what he taught me was he taught me, um, the psychology of, you know, human interaction, how to ask questions, what questions to ask, get better at asking questions. And once you know how to ask questions, you can close the sale because they pretty much will close themselves. And he was right. So I went to California for, for about three days and spent some time with him. And I learned about um, how you know humans think. Um, he wanted to know more about me. I had to let all my my feelings out. I had to learn about like, you know, my past and my family and you know, and, and, and realize why you weren't successful, but why are you successful now? Um, what, what is the catalyst and things like that? Um, so he really helped me learn about success. The success was never about what you do. It's how you do it and how you carry yourself because there's two different, there's two, two different states. There's a, a beta state and an alpha state. And the beta state is someone who's a follower. An alpha state is someone who's a leader. And once you, you know, change yourself from that beta state to an alpha state, people are attracted to alphas versus betas. It could be a woman, it could be a man, it doesn't matter. You still are an alpha state. So like if you see somebody online and they just have that leadership quality of them, it's because they took the time to really learn about themselves and go through that mentorship and coaching. So it's really never about learning the skill set of marketing. It was more about learning the skill set of me, right? How to get better for me. So I learned, I learned that. And when I learned that, that's when really things started to shift because once that business closed down, okay, because it, it just, you know, closed down because the unethical practices um, at the end, I still had to make money. I still had to move forward. And I still was, you know, I was still earning $11,000 here, a thousand here. So I still kept producing. Um, so, I realized it was never about the product. It was never about, it was me. I had to, you know, rise up to that alpha state to, to become the person that I wanted to aspire to be. Because when you see like someone out there having success, it's never about what they do. It's about the trials and tribulations that they go through and what they learn about that process to become better, to attract someone because somebody can actually, they can see that they can, they, they, they can resonate with that. Right. Humans, are not dumb. They, they, they can tell when someone has done their homework and has really stepped up that, you know, stepped up to that level and really took the time to really mentor themselves as well. So. Well, that's excellent to learn because now we get to know a little bit more about Rich. But I have a question. Another question is, I understand you promote a number of different opportunities, just like what you're mentioning there. So yeah. from all those different opportunities that you have, what is your favorite one to promote? I'll let you answer this one first. We're not allowed to say names, right? <laughs> no, you, you don't have to say names. No, no, no. Well, what I can tell you as far as business models perspective, high ticket affiliate marketing is the best model that we actually have discovered that changed our lives, you know, versus selling lives, versus yeah. selling low ticket type programs yeah. that are like very low value, you know, type stuff like ClickBank and JVZoo, and Warrior Plus. You know, we dabbled in a lot of that stuff, but we use those specifically for our list. Um, just to create, you know, cash flow to keep it going, right? Yeah. But when it comes to having a high ticket sale of 10, 20, 30, or forty thousand dollars in commissions, we're talking like high ticket. You know what I mean? That's the best way to go. It, you don't need that much sales to get to that point. Yeah. And that's what's great. You just got to up your game and your skill sets as a marketer so that you can attract the right types of quality people. Um, we've done it organically. We've never done it with people like, are, are ads shocked. or anything they're shocked at yeah. how we've done it yeah. yeah people are shocked on how we um have done it literally with um I, i've tried some paid marketing for a while yeah 
but the the bulk of the pie chart of our business yes has always come from social media always always so and it requires to get to that point like when we did our first was it like forty two thousand forty three thousand dollars in like fifteen, 15 weeks, weeks yeah. social media so it really was all social media social media and and, yeah. and we'll tell you how we do it we're not afraid to share the truth of not at done. all we love sharing you know what yeah we're always absolutely transparent. yeah you know um, it but, took it took us to get uncomfortable. Yep. We didn't have the the brand Ace and Rich. This is Anastasia and Rich Guzman. Yeah, <laughs> right? Rich. The Ace and Rich name became a an internet marketing brand because the people saw it that way. Yeah. Um, mind you, Rich and I come from two different worlds. We met online, so we do have a romantic love story how we met online. Yeah. And it was through Skype. That go, we were go, met, go that we in. met. <laughs> <laughs> the magic we fell in love that way. But as far as high ticket, I, yeah. I, um, high you know, I, I really like high ticket. I mean, remember I told you about Carbon Copy Pro, my first venture of that company, which is not around anymore. Yeah. Uh, it, my first introduction to affiliate marketing was high ticket. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, products that were, you know, thousand dollar commission, thirty five hundred dollar commission, uh, you know, six thousand dollar commissions. Yes. $10,000 commissions. Mm -hmm. And what I realized in the very beginning when I was wet behind the ears, I never really upgraded to really the higher, higher, higher uh, tickets. I've always only upgraded to the, maybe the first level high ticket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um, I actually realized real quick that you got to be, be positioned to really have that leverage. So if I can go back in time and tell my, my old self, right? Uh, we got a time machine. I can go back and say, hey, Rich, don't stay here. Go here yes, immediately. I agree. And you will go so much further, a lot faster. Yeah, because you remember that um, argument we had when I first broke through, when it was that time where we you were training me, because he's my mentor. He was my first coach. I've never been coached. Before I became Coach Ace and had hired Jeffrey Combs to be my coach, this guy here was the one that took me under his wing, and I became his protege. And he was watching me very carefully, and he saw my bad habits. And it started when I had to go find online. He said, I need you to go online, find a course. Even if the course costs money, I want you to buy it. So I found a, a book or something. And it was like nine bucks. And I gave him a, some flack about spending $9. I'm not going to spend no $9. On and I got all, you know, ghetto on him. I was like, I ain't spending $9 on none of that stuff. I don't think so. And I got like that with him. And then he goes, come here, come here. Let me tell you something. If you expect to be a six-figure earner and you can't spend $9, what makes you think when you make money, you're going to spend $9,000 on something you need for your business? And that was a that uh, was a boom. That was a wake up call. Yes. Yep. Because, because it did come to that point in the future yeah. that we had to invest over ten thousand dollars for the first high ticket for our investment to be positioned yeah. for what we needed, which was we needed to get the coaching and mentorship yeah. and upgrade ten thousand dollars to get in. Yeah. Nobody was doing it. Only Ace and Rich was qualified to do it. You know what we did, guys? Let me tell you, we took every cent we earned in commissions right out of our e-wallet, it right back boom, in. put it right into it yep. and upgrade right to the spot that we needed to be. Yeah, and just kept going. And, and kept we going. knew yeah. once that, that commission number aid went to zero, we we're like, oh shit. <laughs> and that's when we were like, did we make a mistake or did it, is this something that we were supposed to do? And it was scary. It is an uncomfortable thing to do because I don't think I've ever spent $10,000 in my life like that. But you know no. what? It wasn't, it wasn't a spend. It was an investment. Yeah, and, and, and the mindset of like when you're advertising and everything, like mm -hmm. um, there was times, I don't know if you guys do solo ads, but we, we've we invested literally 14,000 clicks in one month. Yeah. Uh, so many vendors we went With through. solos, yeah. And um, we learned a lot from that. We, we sure we, did. We really did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we realized when it comes to that, you, you really have to have a certain volume, you know, for that as well. We do. Um, but through, but again, that's through the experience of going through it, yeah. through high ticket. And we learned about positioning. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about it in uh, the program PLS. We mentioned about high ticket affiliate marketing is the way to go. But you also got to be positioned at the highest, you know, level possible that you can get. Get it all. Go all in, you know. And I, I, people know me when I say don't go half ass. It means do it all. Get all in. Do, you know, mine, investment yeah. wise, everything. Go all in because you don't want to leave money on the table. And and you don't want to pass up commission. That's what I would tell no. my old self yes, that yes. wasn't willing to invest more into, exactly. my, into myself. Exactly. Um, and that's where I <laughs> fell short being wet behind the ears in the very beginning of this industry. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much that I, so much money I lost yes. in that first year in business because 
I mean, you don't know if you're brand new. You don't understand this stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, especially with the wrong mindset, because yeah. you're coming from an employee mentality. Yeah. And somebody's yeah. telling you over your shoulder, do this, do that. But now when you're a self-employed entrepreneur, you're the one that's telling you to do this, do that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, it, it just, I just tell people, it depends how hungry you are. If you're really, truly hungry, yes. inve- you know, invest, invest, invest. There's so much you invested into the past that has gotten you nowhere. Yes. Right. Like we have skill sets now that can pay us for a lifetime. Yes. Right. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Because we understand Gain it now. so much knowledge and yeah. experience. And one of the key factors about being a digital entrepreneur is you hold yourself accountable. Like you really got to be brutally honest with yourself. Yeah. If you are not doing what you're supposed to do, you need to be like, wow, you know what? I take full 100 percent responsibility for not doing that. Like if I'm supposed to be running ads or I'm supposed to be creating a post or supposed to be sending out an email to my list and I know I didn't do it. You better look to you and take responsibility. Be like, okay, I need to do that because no other, it's no one's yeah. fault. Not my coach, not my program, nothing. It's me. That takes a big person. And, in, and maturity, that's a big, maturity in that's, business. That's a big pill to swallow. Yeah. Because oh, definitely. We want to blame every, everybody everything else. else around us. Yeah. Because we don't want to feel that pain internally mm-hmm. because it makes us feel guilty. It makes it us feel bad, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's all psychological. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's excellent. So what social media platforms do you find to be the best to brand yourself on and to promote your opportunities? That's always changing, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it never changes for us as far as YouTube and Facebook. Now we started out with, uh, we do have a Twitter and I have, I have an old account Twitter that was banned. Um, (laughs) I have about 10,000 followers because I built it up to that point. And, Come on, um, Elon. We want our stuff yeah, back. Stuff back. <laughs> so, uh, but we have another one that we opened up, um, Ace and Rich, one that we were, we were using the other one, but yes. now we, we started a new one. Yes. And um, uh, I like Twitter because Twitter is just very, very simple. And my strategy I, I like using with Twitter is if I'm creating a video on YouTube and I'm building up an audience yes. on Twitter, yes. you got you to gotta look what other people are doing too, right? Like the mm-hmm. news media, all these people, what do they do? They make a video on uh, on YouTube, and they'll take that video. They'll they'll put it on on the on Twitter, and they'll put a link, and they can just drive it right to whatever platform you want to drive it to, right? Facebook could be you know that's how they get more views and yeah. build up more audiences. Um, and then YouTube has that factor where over a hundred, you start getting more views, right? Yes. So, um, but I'll tell you, it's I I I like YouTube. Facebook as far as for the brunt, like the, the, the foundation. Yes. That's what I like, mm-hmm. like the most TikTok. I'm kind of still up in the air about, I've tried it for a little while. Um, but already we're, we're, we're getting some information that they might get banned. Yeah. There's some you know, bad practices going on. Yes. Um, but for us, like I said, you know, Facebook, YouTube is really has been the best for us. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, I kind of agree with that because I, I like using Facebook and also YouTube. But YouTube, I actually built uh, YouTube one channel up to 2 million views in seven months. And nice. when you start getting something like that, now you really have, you know, a powerhouse, you know, as long as they don't like trash it on you. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I've, I've had it. I've had it canceled. Yeah. Um, Me too. Learned... One of my old accounts. Yeah. One of my old we accounts. We were YouTube partners. Yeah, I was a YouTube partner yeah. with... Uh... With YouTube, when we first got started back in the Wild Wild West in 2008, um, I became a YouTube partner. Um, I had it going on, but because of marketing and the way Google, when they brought, you know, Google brought YouTube, it was a copyrighted music. It was a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, actually, we learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot from getting banned on it because yeah. they also told you, they told me what the problem was. Mm-hmm. And I understood yeah. what it was. I was using. Oh, you mean they actually told you? Like now they don't tell you, but before they used to tell you. They they <laughs> they told me because I saw what it was because I was yeah. watching what was going on. So I actually got the information. And one thing is, if you use public domain, be very careful because they still can, you know, take back their copyright to some degree. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. if just remember. What was that, guys? Oh, yeah, Warner Brothers. A lot of their stuff looks like it's public domain. Yeah, it's yeah. not. And yeah. th- that's what got me da- down on that. I had I was getting, one mm. month I had 750,000 views with 250,000 hours of watch time. Yeah. Beautiful. 
yes. you know, yes. but because of the problem with yes. getting something that I thought was public domain yes, and it wasn't, now you're opening yourself up to a whole new kettle of fish. Yes. So that, that was the problem. Now and here's the topic of, of uh, before you get to your next question, speaking on the topic of social media, one of the things that can happen to an entrepreneur's mindset is, you know, you can't control social media. You don't own it. OK, you can put all the content you want for years to come. But once them, those accounts get shut down, OK, what do you do? It takes a toll on your mindset and you go, oh, oh gosh, I did all that work and now I got to start all over. So what? That's the way you got to be resilient. You got to have a rhino skin. You got to yes, be tough. You got yeah, to earn your stripes. Yeah. Once One of the things that Rich and I learned is that if they shut us down, we ride that thing till the wheels fall off. We will create another, another account. Yeah. Yes. Create a whole new Gmail account, yeah. new name and all just so that we can have our stuff back. Yes. Never let that stuff stop you. Don't take that stuff personal, guys. When that oh, no. happens, don't take it personal. Just open up another yeah, account. It's frustrating. But, you yeah. know, when you have that skin like a rhino and you're just like, you know what? All right. Another day at the office. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you know what I did was I actually took uh, that I, I was depressed a little bit, quite frankly. We, you know, you get shut down on two million it views happens. and so I'm forth. I'm glad I said that because a lot of people don't, a lot of leaders don't want to talk about that. No. But we, and we then keep it real, we tell you. I have another one already started and I'm Good slowly building it, slowly building it. I'm doing mm -hmm. it differently because I'm making kind of sure, because if you look at um, the different uh, people that are putting like movies on, you'll yeah. see that a movie might only have one or two people that actually have it on. Yeah. Yep. And you got to be careful about those ones. The ones yes. that have a few different of the same one on, those yeah. ones are probably okay. So you got to be really yeah. careful uh, when you're doing and, it. And now, the thing about having a lot of views, the thing views don't pay the bills. No. I don't care how many views you get. No, it doesn't. The thing is, if you got loyal subscribers clicking on those links and then yes. descriptions yes. and going on your list, and yeah. they're getting your emails and you're that's, following up with them. That's yeah. key. So I'd rather have, you know, a hundred qualified subscribers loyal who watch our show yeah. on YouTube and they're on our list. Then yeah. they have a hundred thousand people who are just views and they don't do nothing. I think that's I, you know, right. You know, you're I absolutely learned, correct. I, that, <laughs> like you said, you learned something, right? What I learned yeah. uh, is exactly that. Like when, like our channel, if you look at our channel, it's really weird. Like our views are not astronomical, no. but we generate leads every day. Mm -hmm. And it's because, you know, it, it's the quality of lead that we're attracting, yes. right? Because our philosophy, no matter what we step into, mm -hmm. we focus on three principles. Build, and always how can we engage? And then how do we sell, mm -hmm. right? We sell by the call to action, right? It's old school. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to tell them what to do. Yes. Because if you don't, somebody else will. Oh, oh definitely. Hey, yeah, click on the link below. Or, mm -hmm. hey, I'll <laughs> the link below. And you don't have... I. I I have literally said, hey, there's a link below there. You go to a page, continue to put your email <laughs> in. You know what I mean? I, I've, I've, I've told them everything. Yeah. And, but it, it doesn't bother me. You know, I just say, just go there. Yeah. And you have to tell people what to do. If you don't, they will go somewhere else. Precisely. Because the name of the game, no matter what platform you're on, let's say it's TikTok, let's say it's Instagram, you got to take those people out. Yep. and get them in your list and get them into your world. That's it. Then get them into your Facebook group so they can see you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Interact with them and have that relationship established. Yes. And that's what we've always focused on. We never focus on quantity. We always focus on quality. quality. And, yes. And, and, and if people like our subscribers right now, we're still at like 2,000, not even 3,000 subscribers. Uh -huh. yeah. But the quality of subscribers that we have, the people that you know watch our videos, we know we're going to get leads. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like one of my, my marketing mentors when I first got started, she said, remember this, you can get a lot of views on a video. Why don't you make a, a video and talk about Britney Spears and put the keyword Britney Spears. You're going to get a lot of views. However, is that targeted? Yes. No. <laughs> right. It's because not. It's not. But if you're targeted, you might get less views, but you're getting targeted views now your message is matching the market and your message is matching the market. Yes. You're more likely to get a lead from that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right. So I have a few more questions, but you know something, okay. this is going so well. <laughs> I just want to keep it going. Yeah. So what kind of psychology do you use to get your members to take action? 
Ooh, Ooh that's, that's a tough a good one. one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Rich and I, we, you know, we've been coached by Jeffrey Combs and he's, he's one of the best. And, um, we learned a lot from him about ourselves and yeah. we had to get coached first before we started using psychology on our students. Um, a lot of them, you know, come from different walks of life. So they all have different pains, problems, and challenges. And what we do is we work with each individual one, you know, separately. Um, one of the ways to do that as a group is we hold mastermind meetings every week, almost up to twice a week. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And we do that privately in a Facebook group. Ours is called the inner circle. Those yeah. guys love it. One of them yeah. is actually here. I see him painting. Hey, He's Tracy. working right there. Up, Tracy <laughs> never misses a beat. Never miss a beat. They show up from all over the world and they come and they bring to us what are their pains, problems, and challenges. Yeah. And then we customize the coaching according to their needs, wants, yeah. and desires. Mm -hmm. So the psychology can come anywhere from fear, right? Any types of fears anxiety. that they deal with, anxiety, yeah. right? You know, addictions. Different mm -hmm. types of addictions. And we're not that talking about have. like alcohol and drug addiction. No. We're talking about yeah. mental addictions. Mental addictions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like know? watching too many shorts and too many reels, and they just keep going on and on and on and <laughs> on and on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But a lot of the addictions are also they buy too much crap on the internet and they yeah. have this fear of buying another thing because they think it's not going to work again. How about that? Yeah. Right. So we got the we got to work with this type of a fear because. We know that when you take that sip of uh, a hot cup of coffee and you burn your lip the first time, it doesn't stop you from taking another sip, does it? No. So that's what we use that when we talk to people yep. and we say to you, it's not going to stop. Don't let that stuff stop you. It's temporary. Now you need to learn that when you find the right mentorship and the right mentor is going to guide you in the right direction to know what to do step by step, your fears are gone. You need to trust you need to trust that individual who's going to take you by the hand and work with you. And this is why a lot of team members fail because they're on their own. They thought that they could put all their, their faith in some one person who brought them in and they leave them high and dry. So what happens? They go hunting. They call sponsor shopping. They go find somebody yeah. that's going to give them the, the tension, the love, you know, whatever they need as far as helping them move forward to get over those fears. You know, that's a good point. Let me bounce off that one sure. because- I remember when I when I first got started, it, I didn't really get that guidance. I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own because that's just the way the industry is. Yeah. Um, and I told her when I met her, I said, "Look, you know, now we're coming together and we're doing affiliate marketing. I vow to because I told my I told myself this in 2008 when I first got you know in that first year. I said, once I get successful, I don't want to treat anybody like this. I said the same thing." I don't want to treat anybody like this. Mm -hmm. I don't. They don't deserve it. They don't. Right. So I took that. Yeah. And anybody that we meet, we give them the respect and decency yes. and time yes. that they deserve. Yes. Because, you know, people always say, oh, well, your time is valuable. Yes, our time is valuable and we do respect our time. But it's okay to give a little bit of time with someone. So let's say, mm -hmm. you know, we're coaching somebody for like a half hour or something. If we go over, that's okay. We're in deep, you know, in You're the in chemistry, man. You're jiving. On there. Yeah. You don't want to break that circle. The, oh, in 30 minutes. That's it. It's my time. No, it's not going <laughs> to yeah. work that way. It's our time. It's you, our you're time. putting in your time. Yeah. Right. Cause you, you know, you probably got a family, you got something going on, right? I respect your time as much as you respect my exactly. time. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. And when I, when I understood that and I vow never to treat people like the way I was treated, that's when we knew a lot of people started coming to us. They were just like, you know, I like Ace and Rich. They're not like anybody else out there. And that's where I think that's how we stuck out because yes. we put their needs first instead of their, you know, instead of like a lot of marketers out there, and I don't see any names, but they put their own selfish needs first. And for yes. us, we never done that. Mm -mm. From the get go, we're like, okay, you, what's up? What do you need? Like, what's going on? Why, why are you struggling? Right? Like, let's start here. Yes. And that's why I love what we're doing now with you know one of the offers we're, we're, we're making things more interactive yes because everybody's in a different place in their journey they are definitely you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. so you've got to do that and, and even if you don't get to everybody at least even a couple of people in that one hour other people can watch and go oh, i learned something mm -hmm. I learned something like they are right now i didn't even know mm -hmm. how come my sponsor's not teaching me that how come i what's going on here yes it's because and here's the reality they don't care they don't. Yeah, it's true. They yeah. don't. 
Yeah. And this is why you got to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's again psychological yes yeah it is and you know here's uh, something else that uh, i was just wondering about what was the best training that you ever attended to get motivated i know you talked about your mentor and stuff like that what one was the one that really strikes in your mind this was the best uh mindset wise or marketing doesn't matter either one, you know, like <laughs> yeah, I'll give you both. I'll yeah, you that both. sounds great. Go first, go first. Hawaii? Hawaii, right? uh, no, that was overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta think about um, how many we traveled. Yeah. Um you wanna go first or you wanna go first? You go. Uh, mindset wise, um um ultra mind ESP system mm -hmm. to program my mind. Uh, to think a different way. That was an um, audio CD series that you yeah, listened to, right? Yeah, we have right? like pulsing sounds and stuff, um, uh, brain waves. Um, Neurolinguistic was, programming. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's not, no. Is that, is no, that, that NLP? No, NLP, no, no, no. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's a little different, another, yeah. Another, another ball game. Okay. <laughs> um, that, to me, I have to give credit where credit is due because that's what helped me get my, you know, helped me get my first Jose success. Jose Silva, right? Jose Silva, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other thing... Um, I got to do one more um, as far as the mindset. I have to. Mike Dillard, magnetic sponsoring. Okay, yeah. Oh, I, yes. I, I have to put the name out there because yes. it, 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 that what that taught me the um, beta alpha. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. So that's, that's, that's one. Hey, um, have, have you ever heard of this? Um, you're an alpha, but sometimes you have to pretend to be a beta. Uh, yeah, I, I did hear that. Mm -hmm. In other words, never never forget where you come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you if once you do, you're on your way back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. That's it. Um, then, as far as marketing, I've oh events, events, events. He's talking oh, about the you, event. No, no. Was... Did he say event? No, no. Did you say event? No, no. Training. 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 Yeah. Okay. yeah. So now I'm gonna go into marketing to help yeah. you guys out. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of courses. Oh, How many courses have I done? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, over the years. <laughs> um, my favorite course, if I could pick one, this is hard to pick one. Oh my God. Um, there was one called uh Sherry Yvette in 2008 for Woo! Google AdWords. She was called back. she was called the Urban Cowgirl. And she taught me keyword research. She taught me how to find how to how to um take one day and put the candle on. And put some music on and get in that mood and put your computer on and literally just do nothing but keyword research for that one day and have fun and do some keyword mining. And what's keywords is that's how you people find you when you create content for like, you know, YouTube and stuff. Now, and now I'm going to go with mine. So that I would say that that really was the catalyst. You're going to be really blown away with what I'm going to say for me, because mm -hmm. we come from separate, you know, trainings. Cause I do a lot of the community building and, mm -hmm. you know, training, coaching and stuff. So, for me, um, as far as training, I would say Max Steingart, Endless Free Leads. Yes. And I got on the phone with Max. It was an amazing experience because to be able to go through his boot camp and really learn the ins and outs of open dialogue communication and using social media to know how to open conversations, find out people's wants, needs, desires, pains, challenges, yeah. all that. Like, I didn't know all that stuff. But Max broke it down mm -hmm. in that course, and I was able to dive into it and just focus on practicing what I'm learning. Because you can learn, and you can learn and learn. That means getting stuck in learning mode. Mm -hmm. But with Max, he gives you practicality. It means, okay, I teach you one thing, go do it the next day imperfectly so that you can go and start learning. And that's what I did. And it got me over the fear of prospecting because I hated prospecting. I learned badly in <laughs> network marketing. But when Max breaks it down, he makes you – eliminate those worries and you know mm -hmm. bring down the guard right yeah. so i yeah. love max endless free leads and i talk about it all the time love that one and then another one this is an oldie rob fours does remember this one hereditary seo, SEO. Mm -hmm. i learned how to blog because dude i was like blogging up to 2500 to 4000 words Oh, in blog posts. Wait, 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 wait. oh my, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I gotta give you credit. Uh, she was doing about two blog posts a day for years at 2,000 to 4,000 words, we two a day. Oh, because yeah. I was getting ahead of the competition. We were, yeah. we were all over Google, 
And we were generating literally 30 to 50 free leads a day. Mm -hmm. Organically. Uh, until one of the animals came out of Google's updates. <laughs> and then things just went, went to hell. Like Google. So we, we're in a virtual pretty new blog. But, but Rob Four's SEO, predatory SEO, yeah. taught me about search engine optimization, blogging. It was the best course. And it opened up the doors to be able to build that trust with content creation. Mm -hmm. And I learned oh, so much that one day I just out of the blue decided to just get ballsy and just reach out to Rob personally and thank him. <laughs> and next thing you know, he added me as a friend on Facebook. We started communicating and now we know Rob, like we got to have a real oh, conversation yeah. with him <laughs> on video. So now yeah. we're really close. And see, that's the thing. Like when you buy courses, you never know where it's going to lead you to, who you're going to meet in the industry, right. you know? So now we have this awesome relationship with Rob, you know, and we bounce work back and forth. So yeah, I told him, I'll never forget. Thanks to you and your predatory SEO course. It taught me, how to create content. Now, you know, with those two courses, those are great foundations for people when they're yeah. actually where they are. So if you're looking for like the best training things, think about where you are and where you want to go, right? That you make a goal. So if you start out in blogging, do you want to be the best blogger? Do you yeah. want your blog to go to the next level? Then focus on courses in that area. It's no different than like picking up a book and reading about it, but you're reading the wrong thing and it's not where you are right now, right? I'm glad, I'm glad what you said about relationships because mm -hmm. we've established so many great relationships in the industry. And then we started establishing our relationship with leaders because they, you know, they've noticed us. Um, and you know, like and what we love about our inner circle is that you know, when a leader comes out and says, hey, I have a new course coming out and we know that leader creates like the best courses out in the internet. Mm -hmm. We can share that with them and feel really good yes. about what they're learning because we know the teacher teaches so well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and, and we could always share and give value. And they always purchase it because they know when we share something, we always share stuff with great value. Yeah. You know? Oh. Yeah, and that's true. You know, every time that you're doing something online, whether it's a Zoom or some sort of webinar or whatever, you have great content. And that's a fantastic thing because a lot of people don't have that. They can't yeah. continue to think that fast to be able to say the words properly. So now here's one other thing. Just so you know, I am going to have Max Steingard on in January the seventh. I think awesome. it is. Beautiful. Uh, here, here's 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 my my uh, scheduling. <laughs> okay. Wow. And, and it says right here, Max. That's Ju fantastic. July, January twenty seventh. 2023 so awesome. hey whoever's watching this don't hate okay pen and paper man it's so awesome oh yeah i'll, I'll tell you frankly <laughs> that's what i do here's here's an example this is a, a book that i've been working on okay there it is i have probably about 30 of these done up and it's pen and paper and then here what i did was i rewrote the questions so that uh -huh. i could read them you there know you go. Um, awesome. but I did write them down first, you That's know, great. but anyways, where do you think the future of affiliate marketing will look like in the next few years? Uh -huh. uh, I'll let you know. Right. Technology wise, I can tell you that a lot of affiliates are going to leverage artificial intelligence. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I, uh, I am having so much fun with it. And I'm telling you, I've been testing it and it's doing things like, like speed way oh. past human speed. Oh, and yeah. it's like saving so much time with content creation and, uh, you know, come up with ideas. I mean, you can create your own checklist, ebook, product, slides, webinars, all through the help of leveraging AI, doing the research and providing the mm -hmm. content for you. But you still also, another thing about AI that I find with affiliate marketing is you don't want to just rely on it. You want to just use it as a tool. You know, I was, I was going to say that. Yeah, because like, you, you still got to personalize. You got to have that human element. Yes. yes. Because it. still, still there, there is that kind of sterile uh, type thing in there. Because if mm -hmm. you listen to AI voice, you yeah. can tell when there's an AI on. You know, they'll oh, yeah. say, "Oh, this sounds so good." It, you know, you can't tell, but you can. You can tell. Yeah. And Although, sometimes it can be biased too. <laughs> yeah. Some of some of the AIs, what I've been finding is that they're the voice, they're starting to come out with emotional aspects to mm -hmm. the voice. Showing empathy. And empathy, and then yeah. anger, and then they're showing, 
oh, I'm so sad and stuff like that. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's coming. It's not yes. there yet. AI, no, it's on its way, though, because it's well, learning yeah. from what you input into yeah. it. Yes. And then it just picks up where you, and it remembers the it's conversation crazy. you yeah. had it's, with it. Then it keeps mm -hmm. building and building like blocks on top yes. of it. It's, it's, yeah. it's maturing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the technology is maturing um, with time. Yeah. Um, yes. that it, that it, it, it'll it's, take some time for some of the yeah. things to be yeah. able to said, get to that point, you know? Mm -hmm. The more that it feeds, the actual um, advancement, is that's how it comes. Yeah. The more that it gets fed information, the more it becomes more sophisticated oh, yes. um, on its own, which is freaky, right? Yes. So, oh, yeah. um, but for me, you know, I, I, I feel that there's a lot of marketers out there now and a lot more people are coming on board. Um, so it's getting a little bit more difficult to, to stand out in the crowd. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Good point. But how do you stand out in the crowd? Mm -hmm. Again, you know, becoming that alpha state definitely will always outweigh mm -hmm. anyone who's just trying to make money online. The majority yes. of people. So here's here's what I see, and and I don't think this part's not going to change. There's always elements of marketing that teaches people on how to make money online, and what they do, they portray it and they make it seem so easy. Hey, you can make money in four easy steps, and you know you look at that, and we know that in order to attract someone, we have to go to that level to get their brain triggered to put their information and in to find out more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but after a while, I feel that people are going to look more for transparency, uh, trust. Um, you know, they should be calling it instead of like attraction marketing, they should be calling it trust marketing now. Yes. Because that's where we're heading. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because the name of the game really, how can you build trust? How can you get good at building trust? And how, you, how can you get even better at building trust? Um, if you focus on that now, you'll be 10 steps uh, uh, ahead of everybody else in the future because it, it'll be like, yeah. how does this person make as many sales? Yes. Because they're focusing on putting that person first, building trust, giving um, more value than the competitor mm -hmm. will, will ever give. Yes. And that, that, yeah. that's, that's what I see happening in the future because there's just so many people in the industry right now and you really got to stand out. Um, but the beautiful thing about it is we all are unique, right? I mean, in God's eyes, especially where, we, you know, we're, we're all unique. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and the thing about it is that's our asset. Mm -hmm. And if we could hone in, you know, ourselves with that asset that we have, everybody has a gift to give because everybody's unique. You're going to attract someone because like attracts like, yes. you yes. know? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn to become the best version of yourself yes. mm -hmm. to attract the best possible high quality client to your business. And let me piggyback That's off it. of that because it's the authenticity of showing, you know, everything, your flaws yeah. and your wins. And, and your cares that you yes. care about them. Yeah. yeah. Because again, it goes back to that saying, which is people don't care about how much, you know, they want to know how much you care. Yeah. Yes. When you start showing that authenticity of yourself on social media, on your videos, yeah. in your content, people will fall in love with you. You mm -hmm. become what is called the celebrity icon. You become the yes. celebrity status to them. You know, it's funny when we go out, you know, we think, as a celebrity, they got their entourage. They need to pay for people to do that kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. When you're an internet celebrity, it's a little different. Yes. Because you don't know who's watching your YouTube videos or seeing you on TikTok, yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. All of a sudden, you go in a public place and they go, I follow you. That's what yeah. you see. That's weird. And yeah. it's a weird feeling. You're like, yeah. really? You follow me? That's cool. You know, I'm uh, like, can I take a picture with you? Can we do a selfie? You know, <laughs> it's amazing what's happening to our digital world where it's bringing people to have relationships to come together. So the future of affiliate marketing is going to evolve. Yes. And there's a lot more competition as far as social media. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the more you can get personal. Yes. Which we're ahead of the game on that because we've mm -hmm. always done that from the beginning. Yes. Is that if you learn that now and don't just rely on systems, you're going to do fantastic because mm -hmm. we build a long-term sustainable business literally since 2000 and what like I, i'm, I'm going to start then i started in 2008 but then i lost that business i would say 2000 and 2010 yeah right? and the way these platforms are when they charge people to get in front get your offer in front of their eyes so like you know sponsored ads 
Yeah. It's everywhere, right? But mm -hmm. five years from now, probably what's going to happen is we're going to have a new sophisticated targeted audience and we're not going to even need to pay these platforms. We're going to have to do it ourselves. We have to yes. learn how to leverage both paid and organic traffic and make them work together. That's one thing that we never stopped doing, Rich and I, is we stay consistent all these years since 2010 is organic marketing by making sure we leverage both paid marketing strategies and organic free strategies. Yeah. We work both of them. We don't like relying mm -hmm. on just one thing. You can't rely on just one. So, you know. one there's so, never one so. above all. <laughs> yeah. So when, when you talk about that, about uh, doing the paid advertising, if you had one suggestion for somebody that's brand new, they don't mm -hmm. have a lot of money, what would they do? How, well, what would they, you know, how would they uh, manage? Would they have a budget of say 20 bucks a week, a hundred bucks a week? What do you yeah, think? I mean, I'll tell you what I did um, because once I lost it all and I had to go back to work for Best Buy, same building after working there four years and I had to go back another four years is that I didn't have much money and I was only working part-time because when I got rehired, um, they only gave me a few, you know, like maybe 20, 20 something hours a week. And luckily, you know, I started like at 14 bucks an hour. So I got a little bit of money. And what I did was I ended up, you know, I had like $50 I could put in the traffic a week, you know, just to get something going because I knew I had to get the machine running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I knew I didn't have much. So I took that $50 and I said, okay, well, I got to build my list. I have to follow up with my list and start practicing and start getting the machine rolling and get things in motion. Yeah. I didn't care about sales at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about, you know, the most massive results. All I cared about is how could I get good at this skill set, right? How could I be consistent even if it's small? Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And then from there, I started seeing like one sale pop up, two sales pop up. And then with a little bit of money that was coming in there, I combined my little bit of money from my, from my, um, my, my job and a little bit of money I made from the sales. And I started getting, you know, um, like a hundred dollars in one week, right? Because I combined both. It was a little slow at first, but it worked. Mm -hmm. I started making, you know, I started seeing ones and twosies as far as daily sales. So that really taught me a valuable lesson that if someone is on a budget, they can do it. They just have to be consistent. And but don't expect, you know, the the world, you know, the don't wait for the stars to align with the moon. You know, you just <laughs> do, do it a yeah. little bit each week. Do it for the gratification of actually doing it and learning how to get the results. And the result doesn't have to mean a sale. Right. Results mean, hey, look, I got I got 25 leads. Awesome. Share it on your Facebook wall. I'm telling you what I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got 25 leads. Look, yep. look I prove it. Here's my social proof. You don't need to show commission. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hey, look, look I, I, people are opening up my emails. <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. it was a little bit numbers. That's it. But people yep. loved it because they were yeah. like, this person is actually doing something. Mm -hmm. This yes. person is giving me a walkthrough of what they're doing and taking them to that journey. And they can follow that. And yeah. then they saw the sales come in and, hey, look, got sales. Yes. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? So that, mm -hmm. you know, if you're on a budget, there's no excuse. You, you can do it. 50 bucks a week, 80 bucks a week. You know what I mean? Stop, you know, spending money on other things, make that oh, yeah. sacrifice. Yes. And you can start growing your business. You can. And I want to yeah. piggyback off that because knowing what I know now that I didn't know then because we were homeless and we didn't have any money and we had to rely on organic marketing for so long. Yeah. That's why we're, you know, we got mastered into it. Um, I would I actually do that plan, but I also, here's another thing. If you have a great offer, especially a high ticket, and it's going to pay you, you need to be disciplined not to pay yourself for one year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank That's you. the secret. Yeah. Thank you. Just put everything you back in. Under any circumstance, pay yeah. yourself for one year. That yeah. money is not to be touched mm -hmm. because you're going to roll it every single time you earn right. into right. your marketing, into yeah. your advertising. Yeah. That's for That's sure. That's how you yeah. do it. Even if you have to take your, you know, your, your money yeah. from work, like, like I have discipline. to discipline. You, you yeah. have to. It's a business. Because we did it. Yeah. Yeah. It took us 11 months to get to a certain point. And when we needed it, we used it mm -hmm. and we kept doing it and kept doing it. Yeah. And the more we reinvested back into our business, the more our business reinvested Rude. itself back to us. Yes. Excellent. And I asked Best Buy to give me full time. That <laughs> really helped. I, I didn't get it the first time around, but the second interview, um, I, I got it. Yeah, yes. I got it.
And yeah. uh, then I started doing like, you know, three to five hundred dollars, uh, five hundred clicks a week. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the magic number. Should I tell them? Yes. <laughs> You're running solo ads. You really want to crush it. You have to do minimum of two thousand clicks a week. That's it. Yes. So basically, do exactly what they did. They started off small. They grew it. And then just look at that. Now they're at 2,000 clicks a week. Now, just think of that. 50 cents per click. You know, now you understand how much people spend on it. Because a lot it of times... Averaged about, it averages about 150 leads plus a day. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that uh, most people don't realize is that a lot of people, they'll show you this. This is how much I made. I made six figures this month, but they don't tell you that they spent six figures to get that six figures. They don't. They don't, they don't tell you anything like that. And do you realize that, like we know, because we've done it, right? Mm -hmm. We know it costs money to make a business work. But yeah. when you say, hey, you know something? I just made... $150,000. Everybody thinks, oh man, you're the greatest on earth. And then, <laughs> you know, it was like $200,000 to, uh, you know, do that. <laughs> but the failure, right? The money they lost in the beginning just mm, to get they it don't going. Talk about that part. That's uh, right. But I will say, I mean, for us, we, we, we did a substantial amount of income with just organic. Yes. You know, you're over a million we, dollars in commission. Because we don't yeah. so hungry. We're yeah. just so hungry and and we just kept building the audience kept creating content and mm -hmm. you know giving the value and you know what we did if i'll give you another tip we we went out we scoured the internet mm -hmm. and we took a whole bunch of questions that people were asking that leaders were oh yeah too good to answer oh and we made yeah. videos answering those questions and we yes Ask Ace, Ask Ace and Rich. And this is how we attracted the people who made yeah. over, you know, over 40 something K mm -hmm. in 15 weeks. That's how we did it. And then it and, evolved. Yeah. And they're like, oh, what are you guys doing? And they came over and like, yep. want to know what you're doing. And and it's because all these questions were like, hey, John ask. <laughs> yes. Hey, Cindy ask. Mm -hmm. And we asked the question. And guess what? We put it on YouTube. Some saw yes. the Some didn't. And they were like, these people are answering my questions. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They don't even know me. Yeah. Giving yeah. value. Yes. And that's, what we, and that's what we we saw attracting so many people for that reason. And then we moved yeah. it. It was in the very beginning, it was called beer and chocolate. We didn't have a name for it. <laughs> so I would eat a Kit Kat and he would drink beer. Oh. And what happened was we were answering people's questions, right? And then um we changed it to the hot seat. Yes. Because Rich came up with the name after meeting Abraham Hicks at a live mm -hmm. event from the movie the secret yeah. so he went yeah. there and then she put him in the hot seat so he was like we should yeah. call it the hot seat yeah so we called it ace and rich hot seat and it ran for like nine years straight wow. we we're doing it for a while man Tracy just, knows. Yeah. he, he yeah. never missed a beat he was always there yeah uh, people were there we attracted so many people including leaders started to grab attention and some of them started to use the name hot seat too uh oh <laughs> <laughs> but originally it, it started with us and then what happened was you know, it was a great model. You could just answer people's questions right there on the spot in social right. media live yes. and coach them right in yes. front of everybody. Yeah. And people saw the value in that. Mm -hmm. And then they would reach out to us privately and say, how much do you charge for your coaching? Ooh, uh, $550 per minute. Uh, that's, that's good. How it, that's how it yep. did. People were coming to us. We ended up building a clientele really mm -hmm. large just from doing those those activities consistently and what we yes. taught them they said they've never learned it anywhere else They're like no wow, you guys really like yeah give us some meat and potatoes i'm like yeah. and our style of uh of coaching is a 4d style yeah. type of learning and we didn't we didn't say that some somebody said, somebody that. said that somebody mm -hmm. said that you guys are doing like a 4d style i love right. it I'm like yeah okay. <laughs> cool and uh hey you know we've really enjoyed having you in the house and i had a fantastic <laughs> time but this is your point to promote something that you would like to promote <laughs> and do it now. And then, you know, the world will know a little bit more of what you want to promote. Okay. So obviously, you know, we're super affiliates. We do have multiple offers. One of the things that we like to do when we promote something is we like to start off with our coaching. We have something called the diamond coaching program. It runs for six months. 
if you'd like to be um, a student of ours and want us to, you know, mentor you. We spend six months with you and um, we map out an actual game plan for you to follow. And everything from mindset to skill set, digital marketing wise, yeah, we and the, teach you. And the coaching is mm -hmm. literally uh, twice a month yes. for six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we do 30 minute sessions and yes. we tend to go over because we get really intense and stuff. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, and we, we break things down. It's like a, it's like a breakthrough type of coaching because, yeah. you know, there are going to be times where, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about confidentiality. We're going to be speaking right. things that, you know, that are between us and the coach. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we discuss it. The cool thing is you don't just have one coach. You have two because yes. we are a husband and wife team. So I would be coaching you. Then Rich mm -hmm. would take you over as well. And what's great about that is you get to have both minds working yes. with you. And uh, we give a lot of support and, um, do we, do we tell them the price now or no, 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 tell them the price. we don't have to tell the price. No, but what you can do is you can, <laughs> you can give me the link so that when I put yeah. this video up on YouTube, then people can actually click on the link and get your yeah. coaching. We'll give you the link. And then all they do is just schedule the time that they would like to have a consultation with us. Right. We'll discuss and see if they qualify because we yeah. don't just mm -hmm. take anybody. Yeah. No fancy funnels. You know, just no, no we don't use yeah. fancy funnels. We go straight, straight to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to our schedule, book your appointment and, um, you know, get in line so that we can talk to you. And then we spend a really good amount of time, like 15 minutes or so with you and uh, find out what is it that you want to do as far as your goals with affiliate marketing, or maybe you want to create your own course. We can work with you on that as well. Yeah. Um, if you're struggling in certain areas of mindset, we can also create a customized program using the diamond coaching techniques that we do for you as well. So we've helped a lot of people from all walks of life, telling you people that are self-published authors to people that are already new and beginning from scratch. Yeah, internet and we have some brand new updates uh, that are actually coming to diamond coaching. Mm -hmm. So in other words, um, we have like a one-on-one -on -one coaching process that we do for 12 months. Um, that the first month it'll be once a week. And then from that, it'll be once a month, right? That's more intense. That's more, you know, more private, more, yes. um, you know, more intimate. Okay. Yes. And, uh, the sixth month will be a group coaching. So it's more affordable for people as well. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah. No, that's fantastic. I really appreciate having you guys on. And, uh, by the way, I'm going to pitch something too. Just think of this. If you're broke, don't know where to get a dime. We're going to have a program that's going to be like the how to avoid bankruptcy. So we'll help you out with that. So just ask me about it. I'll be more than helping. Okay, here you go. It's a, I don't know. You know, have you ever gotten to that point where you don't know what to say? Okay. No All the time. Yeah, we know something. I didn't write that. I didn't write that pitch down. So, like, you know, I needed to have it written down. But We're what human. it is, you know, uh, basically, I'll help you out. If you don't have money, I'll try to help you out to get you being like Ace and Rich. But then after I get you going, you got to go see Ace and Rich. All right, you, you know, you got to agree yeah. to that. All right. So they've yeah. got a really good co coaching program. So, yeah, just friend us up on Facebook. You know, we love, mm -hmm. you know, anybody who wants to reach out to us, just send a message so I can approve you faster, right? Yeah. Yes. And let us know that you saw us on Brian Braxton, you know, Brian Bracken's show that you saw <laughs> the interview. Too, it happened to me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah Brian Bracken <laughs> interviews. interviews. It's almost like a podcast, you know? Yeah, just send us a friend request. Yeah. You know, we put so much great content of our stuff on our profile. A lot yeah. of our stuff we treat into our profile versus fan pages. We just don't use them that much. We use more profiles. So you're going to see all of our world, everything we do. Mm -hmm. You're going to love being a part of our community. Um, it's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, this is where we're finished because the clap is where <laughs> I can do <laughs> the edits, right? <laughs> Hopefully you guys got lots of value from our story yeah. and what we shared with you guys. You learned but some golden nuggets and start applying some of this stuff that we talked about. Oh yeah. All okay. right. So <laughs> any, anybody, if you uh, want to unmute yourselves, um, then uh, do you mind taking one or two questions from these oh, guys? Oh gosh, we love it. We love it. Q&A. Yeah. So, Q &A. so yeah. um, Tracy, come on, come up with a question. And uh, James, uh, <laughs> Ernest, and Sh Sh Shalisa. Hey guys. <laughs> hey Ernest, what's hey, up, buddy? It, it's me again. I'm just going to say I'm going to pop in. I'm going to let the rest of you guys go. But I have learned some more Douglas here today. You. I have been watching you guys over your shoulder 
Okay. So oh. I've been, yeah, I've been spying on y'all. Okay. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to let you know. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. Appreciate and uh, it. Ernest is actually going to be interviewed next week. Oh, Beautiful. fantastic. Good fantastic. for you. And he knows about native ads and things like that. So that's going to be a, an interesting uh, piece just right there because, you know, yeah. people oh, don't boy, know what Tabuli is. That's people great. don't know what native ads yeah. are. You know, what are they? So I've heard of it, never done it. See? Um, yeah. You know, it's like you could always learn something from someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were talking earlier, um, you know, Brian, about, you know, knowing where you come from and never forget where you come from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we always keep an open mind. Even as, as much as we've done and accomplished, we never feel like it's always end all be all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have egos at all. Mm -mm. We're mm -hmm. always like open to always learn new things. Yes. Right. It's for me, yes. I find that exciting. I think that comes from the musician side of me, mm -hmm. you know, being a musician. Um, I'm always learning. I love yeah. learning. So I'm always open to learn brand new stuff. Yeah. Always keep your cup empty. Yes. Yes. Don't mm -hmm. think of it as half full. Mm -hmm. Don't think of it as half empty. You don't know everything. You don't you gotta, know you're everything. always going to be That's learning. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyways, uh, we'll open up. If any, anybody else has a question, what they thought of this yeah. interview. Oh, yeah. Anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now's the time. You know, just our brain off, is, is right for the picking. <laughs> All right. Tracy's not shy. Tracy. Tracy. Love you, man. Love you. Yeah. I just wanted to throw out there, you know, guys, if you guys are looking for, uh, you know, coaching, like Ace and Rich said, diamond coaching is the way to go, man. I, you know, I went through it and I went through it green. And when I came out the other end, I was like a totally different person. I mean, just my mind was totally different from a workman said, I mean, I work all the time, but I, I can switch it off like a light switch now. Like it's my work workman's attitude and I can switch it off and it's my entrepreneur, you know, and, and Ace and Rich taught me that. And the biggest thing yeah. about the whole thing is their coaching is like more like a, a family atmosphere instead of a, you know, a cynical atmosphere, like going to the doctor or something, you know, it's all family here. We're all family here. Um, Ace and Rich are my brother and my sister. And um, I've known him for a long time now. I don't have to go, Ernest, I don't have to go spy on him, buddy. You know, because everything <laughs> they learn, they teach to us. And yeah. so we don't have to really go and spy. We just have to go spy on the competition, you know. So <laughs> that's, that's basically it, you know. But, yeah, if you guys are looking for something like that, that's that's the way to go. And I would endorse it 100%. You know? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you so oh, yeah. much, Tracy. Excellent. You know you something? Know I'm going to probably keep this stuff in now because – it's really good content what we have here um yeah so does yeah, I, we have the fortunate um you know we we met tracy in uh in nevada and uh reno yeah and we were hanging out we had breakfast together we hung out together um it was amazing to meet tracy and uh real down-to-earth guy you know what i mean um well you know, we met in arizona rich but i didn't get time to sit with you <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was a big event. Yeah, um, when we really um, in in Nevada, we really sat down. We got to know each other. We yeah. had breakfast together, and you know, we're like, "Hey, come on, man, sit down. Let's have breakfast together. Let's have a blast." Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and it was it was cool. You know, um, I can't wait to see you again, man. You know, it's been a while. Yeah. You come to Puerto Rico, right? <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get him to come out here. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in Puerto Rico in 2018, too. and it was nice. Just right after the hurricane, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, one? <laughs> Ir, was it Irma? Was it Irma? That the one that uh, in that time frame? Maria. I think it was. Yeah. Maria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was, Maria. There was back that was back. that was a hand. Yeah. That was a nasty yeah. one. Um, yeah. You know. But uh, so, if James, do you if you have a question, do you have a question at all, James? No, but you need to get more started. Get started. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, J James is new at this, so. Uh, we're really? we're just trying to indoctrinate him now, and uh, uh, he's he's kind of, you know, I'm I'm doing a little bit of coaching with him and awesome. uh, trying to help him out, you know. Just always and remember this, James: build, engage, and sell. Stay, e -E -S. stay with those ABC blocks, yes, and uh, you'll really not get overwhelmed, and you'll stay focused yes. because you're going to learn a lot of new things, and you know, some people get overwhelmed and stuff. Whenever if you ever feel overwhelmed, always go back. ABC. Yes. And that means, um, you know, build, engage and sell. And Always I got another, I got that. another acronym that'll help James learn, do teach. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. 
learn to teach. That means yeah. while you're in your beginning stages, which if I had to start all over again, I was in your shoes. That's exactly what I would do is everything that I learned, no matter what course or product I'm studying from that new golden nugget that you just took away, go and teach it. Mm -hmm. So you could yeah. learn and retain the information more, right? right. You learn yeah. more when you teach another person. But, of course. Do that. but here's yeah. a big, big picture about that. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. The reason why you do this when you learn something and then you actually do it and you teach it, here's a caveat. You're going to take your level of, uh, of your brain state to that alpha state and you become attractive to the marketplace. It's a new vibration. Because now mm -hmm. people are going to look at you like a leader because you are the teacher. You know, we go to school, right? Yes. And if we go right. to school, you know, we have to look at the teacher and they're like the authority. Well, in this, it works the same way in the marketplace. When you start being the teacher, you start being the go-to person. They'll look at you like you're the teacher, the mm -hmm. authority. Yes. And that's how you um, elevate your state to the alpha And make state. it public on your profile yeah. for all mm -hmm. your followers. Yeah. There you go. Well, awesome. thank, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. again, You're welcome, and uh, we'll uh, say goodbye to you one and everyone. And Ernest, it was nice having you on, even though you're hidden now. And Ch Chalisa, it's nice to have you, Tracy. And again, a big shout out to Ace and Rich. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Thank you. Bye bye. Bye -bye.